I have calculated that I've traveled 212,503 miles in the last 12 months. I have stayed in 167 different hotels. 167 different hotels over that same time period. I'm a hotel fanatic. I never stay in the same hotel more than one night. Three days in New York, that's three different hotels for me. I travel so much that I've earned the incredible unobtainium status on Delta. Don't bother looking it up. You won't find it and you can't get it. You need infinite miles to get that high. And along the way, I've burned through seven terabytes on Snapchat with video that thankfully you won't find because it's gone. But why should you care? I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I've learned from my travels. I have learned that we as human beings have a single most powerful tool in our arson, and that is our ability to make human connections. I believe we are people first and hotelier second, and that's the key to our success. I'm going to take you on a quick journey with me through some of the amazing hotels I've seen and stayed at. Hopefully not all 167 of them. I'll only show you seven. Burj Al Arab in Dubai in the UAE. I mean, look at this thing. That round thing on top on the right, that's a tennis court. The Plaza Hotel in New York. What can one say about the Plaza? We all know it, an incredible hotel. This amazing thing on South Peach, the Faina Hotel where the owner commissioned the artist Damien Hurst to create a custom piece of art for him, a woolly mammoth skeleton dipped in gold. 20 million bucks, but who's counting? And this robot hotel in Tokyo, where if you're a local, you go to the middle and get checked in with that robot lady. If you're a tourist, you get the dinosaurs. <laughs> Thankfully, I was a tourist. Ice Hotel in Sweden. Now, I like my rooms cold, but that's a bit much for me. And the Marina Sands in Singapore. That alien ship on top, that's a swimming pool. Now, don't get me wrong, these are amazing buildings, incredible hotels, incredible architecture. But bear with me, because I'm going to ruin this for you. I'm going to tell you that these buildings are nothing more than brick and mortar, glass and steel. And no matter how sophisticated, elegant, or beautiful these buildings may be, there are some things they cannot do. Buildings can't smile. They can't listen. They can't anticipate a need. They won't get out of their way to open a door or hail a cab for you, because that's what we humans do. I've been in the industry for about 25 years, and I've learned a lot of things. I've learned that a guest in a hotel will really appreciate it if you remember their name. And they really love you for it if you know what kind of pillow they like. I've learned that humanity matters far more than buildings, far more than art, cars, or things you may throw at guests. And through my career, I've collected a lot of stories, as you can imagine. It's the hospitality industry, after all. We see all the madness that happens. Two stories resonate and always stand out for me. And if you allow me, I'm going to share a couple of them with you. So fortunately, I have lots of friends in the industry and lots of connections. And I'm lucky that every hotel I go into, inevitably, I walk in the room, and there it is in the corner, a beautiful cheese tray, a nice bottle of wine, and a card with my name on it, sitting at a 45 degree angle against that bottle of wine. Now it's midnight. That's typically when I get to my hotel room. That cheese tray was put in the room probably around 2 PM. That cheese has seen better days. It's sweating by now. I could see the sweat beads running down the side. And that brie, I'll spare you the smell description. You can smell it right now. And the bottle of wine may have been $10 or $1,000. It doesn't matter because it's midnight, I'm not touching it. And if my life depended on it, I will not take it with me because I'm not checking my bag in. And that note, the unfortunate note, has become such a list, they all say the same thing. 
Dear Mr. Wally, thanks for being with us. We hope you enjoy your stay. If you need anything, please call on us. Sadly, it goes in the recycling bin. I don't even open it. Except for this one hotel, I walk in the room, it's midnight, there's the sweaty cheese, there's the wine, and there's the note. However, not in an envelope this time. Jackpot. For an ADD guy, you skip a step for me, I'm yours. So purely out of guilt and a little bit of wishful thinking for karma, I say, what the hell, I'll read the card. I walk up to the card, and as my soul is being crushed reading the same junk again, blah, 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 welcome, we hope you enjoy your stay. On the bottom, the card said, P.S. Blackish on ABC is on channel 12 at 8 o'clock tonight. Holy shit. My brain is racing. Why? How? How did they find out? So I quickly run to my computer, whip it out. I go to Google in private, and yes, I know how to do that. And I Google my name, and there it is. The third entry down is my Facebook profile. The public portion of it said that I like the show. Your wine be damned, your cheese be damned, you got me. I got trolled, and I kind of like it, I must say. <laughs> You've won me for life because you cared enough to find out something about me and to connect with me on a human level. That hotel, one night or 10 nights, I'm not moving away. Another quick story. Generally, when you make a reservations at a hotel, a good one, they'll ask you if you have any special requests. And this one is one of mine, so a bit of self-promotion here, so bear with me. So this guest, evidently in a whiskey-induced state, decides to make our reservations. And he decides he's going to ask for a special request. He asks for two mints to be placed on his pillow when he arrives in the room, and asks for a hand-drawn, framed photograph of Neil deGrasse Tyson. And a love note from Neil to Bill Nye, the science guy. Boom. I would have paid a fortune to be a fly on the wall in that room and see that guy's face when he walked in the door. I promise you he probably forgot that he even made that request, but he will never forget that we fulfilled it for him. He will be a customer for life, he will be a brand ambassador for life, and he will tell everyone he knows about this hotel. This stuff is gold. We love this. You give me an opportunity to surprise and delight you? Easy. Here's what the note said. Billy, you and I are a binary star. Together, we are a symbiotic marvel. However, should we ever drift apart, all of the space time wouldn't be enough to fill the void in my heart. I would implode due to the massive nature of my grief and would succumb to my fate and collapse upon myself. Movie, my place, this weekend, love, Neil. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit more about this human connection business. I'm gonna get a bit Darwinian on you here, so bear with me. We humans are pack animals. We had to be together. We had to stay together to survive as a species. You couldn't run off in the forest by yourself and pretend that you could survive. You'd be eaten alive. It's so part of our DNA. That's why emotional pain hurts so much more than physical pain. That's why social denial hurts so much. That's why those Instagram likes matter so much. Our upbringing has teed us up for a lifelong quest of meaningful relationships. We humans need air, water, food to survive, but our need to fit in is equally as important. We have an insatiable longing for belonging. I'm about to give a shout out to one of my arch enemies. It pains me to do it, but bear with me, it makes sense. Generally, when you go to make a hotel reservation, you're dealing with a highly mechanized corporate machine. And I hate to break it to you, but when you often think you're actually talking to someone online, it's not a someone, it's a bot. Not Airbnb. The brilliant move they made is that when you decide to book on Airbnb, you are immediately connected with a human. Better yet, they call them a host. There's something intimate about walking into someone's living room. 
there's something intimate about staying in someone's guest room. I believe this is a good part of, of Airbnb's success, is their ability to make that connection with you, with a human, in a foreign city, in a foreign land. This human connection business, it applies to any business. It doesn't matter what business you're in. High end, low end, high tech, low tech, it doesn't matter. If you know how to connect with people, you will always win over an able competitor. Because people always have, do, and always will want to do business with other people. Not machines, not computers. Use Slack all you want, use email, use Messenger, use anything you want. Nothing will replace that human connection, that one-on-one. -on -one. Call me old-fashioned, but I believe that my appeal as a businessman is my ability to make those connections with people. If I'm doing a deal with you, all those communication devices and methods make it easier to do so, but they never replace that human connection. I'm going to make the time, I'm going to find the time to go see you, to buy you dinner, to buy you a cup of coffee, to have a drink with you. Nothing will replace that. There's still hope and dignity in a handshake. I'm going to give you an example. Banking, one of the most mundane transactional-based experiences. We all hate it. Who wants to go to a bank? Umpqua Bank in Portland, Oregon, when Ray Davis came in to be their CEO, they had six locations. He decided wholesale that everyone in the bank, top to bottom, has to go through hospitality training. He literally pulled people out of the hospitality industry to do this training for the bank. He took all the bank branches and converted them to the equivalent of hotel lobbies, social gathering places, free Wi-Fi, free coffee, yoga, whatever. He invited the community in. Whether you had to do business at the bank or not, you were welcome. He made a bet that if he was able to connect with his customers on a human level, removing the transaction part of it, which is the necessary part that he still had to do, but really connecting with them on a human level, it would make a difference. Well, he was right. 350 locations from six added some 50 million bucks on his balance sheet of deposit. He got it right. We're talking about banking here. It doesn't get any more transactional than that. This is the stuff of Harvard business case studies. My industry is very focused on service, as is every industry, frankly. It doesn't matter what business you're in. You have to provide good service. Service, sadly, has become very transactional. It's a checklist. We tell our people in hotels, when someone checks in, use their name three times exactly, because that's what we're supposed to do. Ritz-Carlton, once the gold standard for service in the hospitality industry, has a credo card that every employee had to carry and memorize, and practice that credo with every guest. It doesn't get any more checklist than that. You definitely need service in your business, but service is what gets you in the, in the game. Service doesn't win you the game. It's your ability to make human connections is what ultimately will win you the game. When we all focus on making connections with the people around us, it makes us healthier, happier humans. Of course, there's monetary benefits out of making those connections. But as a human being, as a citizen of the world, I believe understanding our need for making those connections will make us want to make more of a difference in the lives of others. Religion, politics, hashtags aside, it brings us back to the core of humanity, the decency we all deserve as human beings living under the same sun, breathing approximately the same air. So my challenge for you in this room today is to go out there and find your blackish moment. And it literally doesn't matter what business you're in. Find that moment that allows you to connect with a customer, with a partner, with anyone. Those are the things that are going to set you apart from your competitors. Here's what I believe. I believe there's dignity, opportunity, in a handshake. In keeping an open door, an open mind, an open heart. In sitting across from someone, looking them in the eye, and making that human connection. That's the only way we're going to be able to deal with all the havoc in the world right now. Empathy, intimacy, quiet respect, one-on-one, eye-to-eye, cell-to-cell, a kind of poetry of our species. 
This poetry is going to help us make sense out of the chaos. It's going to help us find beauty and poetry out of the madness in the world today. Buildings can do that. We here in this room can. So go out there, make some serious human connections, wreak some havoc on the havoc, and remember, we're all people first and fill in the blank second. Thank you.